Hi everyone, Janie here and today we are going to be playing with paint sticks and I'm going to show you how to make a sweet little gate that you can use as a home decor piece inside or you can use it outside which is what I'm going to do with it and I got my inspiration from She's So Crafty here on YouTube and I'm going to put a link to her channel below in the description box so you can check her out but for now let's head on over and get started. For this project you are going to need 10 of these one gallon paint sticks and we're going to set these three aside and you're going to line up these seven one inch apart so these are like one inch wide and then a one inch space in between and you're going to do that all the way across making sure that they are lined up evenly and then once you do that we're going to take two of these and we are going to be adhering them right about there and right about there. And so I have it about two inches up from the bottom and approximately two inches down from the top. And I'm going to be using my Beacon Fabri-Tac to adhere those and this is good for wood and trims and I use this all the time to glue wooden things together like frames so it'll be perfect for this project. Next, we're going to lay our final piece across like this, and we're going to have it be a little bit into this last piece and a little bit into the first piece. So I don't have an exact measurement. You just eyeball that. And then what you need to do is you are going to get the, um, the top point right here on the stick lined up right with the edge of this bottom stick. And then you are going to come over here and you are going to put a little mark right here on that piece of wood. Okay, so that way we know where we are going to be cutting because we're going to cut from there to this point right here. And we're going to do the same thing at the other end. So, whoops, and I just moved it. We're going to get the bottom corner lined up right with this piece of wood right there. and. I don't have my head over there to see it good, but you get the idea. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do the same thing. Right where this piece of wood comes in, I'm going to mark it right there on that piece of wood. So I should let you know that these old lady hands were not strong enough to cut this, but my husband was able to cut it with my heavy duty craft scissors. And I just wanted to let you know that if you are not able to cut this or don't have someone to cut it for you, just adhere that paint stick on the outside to the top and bottom pieces and it will work just fine. So now it's time to glue this in place and I'm going to be using my Beacon Fabri-Tac to do that. And I've got a pencil here. So the first thing I want to tell you is I'm going to be painting this so it doesn't matter that this stick doesn't match because actually I had to get a different stick because I messed up one. Um, but it's also not going to matter if I have any pencil marks. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lightly mark right along each of these sticks so that I know exactly where I want to put the adhesive. Okay? And so you don't, like I said, you don't have to worry about it showing unless you're not planning on painting over this, in which case you might want to find another method to do this. But for me, this is going to be easy because now I can see exactly where I want to put my glue. Okay, I have let the glue dry 24 hours, and you really don't have to, but I prefer to. And now I am ready to give this a white base coat using some white acrylic paint, and I am going to paint it front and back. And for me, by the way, this is the front, but 
you may prefer this side to be the front. And if that's the case, I probably would have glued the sticks on the other direction so that the writing was facing the back. But if you give it a couple of good coats of paint, I don't really think it's going to matter. So I'm going to go paint this and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got my white base coat on, painted it front and back, and I will be honest with you, it probably would have been a lot easier using a spray paint, but at the filming of this, we have a foot of snow and temperatures below zero, so that was not an option for me. But now that that's done, I'm going to be using this textured chalk paint and giving this a little bit of texture as well as obviously an extra coat of paint. And so I will be back when I get that done. So after adding the Whisper White Texture Chalk Paint to that, then I gave it a few coats of Outdoor Mod Podge. Now, I did this because this is going to be outdoors, but if you're gonna have yours inside, you don't have to worry about doing that at all. So now that all of this is done, I am going to get on to the next part of this, which is going to be a sign that I'm hanging from here. So let's get to that. I'm going to be using this little wooden plaque that I got from Michael's. I thought it was so cute with the jagged edges and it has this little rope to hang it with. And these are like 99 cents at Michael's, but I got it on sale for 79 cents. So I got a bunch of them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be staining it with this home decor, huh, I don't have the lid on it and I don't want it to spill, but it's this home decor wax stain and this one is called Antique Wax. And you just kind of uh, brush it on and wipe it off. So I'm gonna be doing that to this and I'm just gonna show you really quick, um, just doing the front of it here. I'm not gonna do the whole thing. Um, well, I am going to do the whole thing, but <laughs> not on camera. So I'm just going to wipe it on and I'm not wearing gloves because this is actually, let me find my cloth here. This is actually easy to wash off. Unlike other stains, I've been able to clean this off from my hands and brushes with just, um, you know, soap and water. So I'm going to be doing this all over it front and back. And then once that's dry, I'll come back and we'll do the next step. And once the wax stain is dry, I went over it with a lint-free cloth to kind of buff it out and remove any excess. And this isn't from right now, but this is from before. And then because this is gonna be outside, I gave it a few coats of Outdoor Mod Podge. But if you're not gonna have yours outside, you don't have to worry about this. Now what I'm gonna be doing is I have the word welcome that I cut out a vinyl with my Cricut and I'm going to be applying that. This is the cartridge that I used for the word welcome and I thought that I would just go ahead and weed this right here on camera. I love vinyling. I do it often but usually I'm doing this to semi trucks and vehicles. So I don't often do it to small projects like this. So this is kind of fun doing it on a smaller scale. There we go. And now I'm just gonna add my transfer tape to that. Because I do a lot of vinyl and this is how my transfer tape comes. Most of you have it on sheets and you know smaller amounts, but not me. So let me figure out how much I'm going to need here, and I'll just cut that off, and just apply it over that, and oh sure, I came in here without my squeegee. Well, let me go grab that real quick. Yeah, that was quick. <laughs> so there we go. Make sure that it is adhered really good. And I'm just going to peel it right off from there and move this over so I can get it lined up right where I want it. Okay, that looks about perfect. Okay, 
If you are new to vinyling, I have a couple of videos I'll try to remember to put below in the description box um, on vinyling that I have made in case you are interested. Okay, let's peel this off. I like to do it fairly slow just to be on the safe side. But it is coming off beautifully. Let me stick that over there to save. And there we go. Now, for those of you who think that there should be um, some sort of sealer over the top of that, this is permanent vinyl. And permanent vinyl is what I use on semi trucks and vehicles, and it stays on for many, many years like over seven years so far. Um, without coming off out in the weather and through truck washes and everything. So I'm really not worried about this coming off. And especially if you were going to have it inside, you really wouldn't need to worry about that either. So this sign is ready to add to the fence. This is what it looks like so far. And oh my gosh, this is just so perfect hanging there. I love it. And this is actually why I needed this centerpiece to fit down inside flush with the, the top and the bottom as opposed to having it, you know, glued to the outside pieces because I needed this to hang like that. And if it was on the outside, it would have just kind of been wonky. So this is so perfect. I am loving it so far and I'm not done. I'm actually going to be adding some flowers to this, but I'm going to do that off camera because I am so wishy-washy. It'll take me forever to go, will this work? Will that work? And, you know, but I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's done. And here it is finished and I absolutely love the way that it turned out. And if you're anything like me and worried about committing to the decorations, you can do what I did. I used twist ties that no one's ever going to see or you can even use zip ties. That will make it easier to change things if you decide to later. And if you're going to be hanging it like I plan to, I use the same technique that I used in a video a couple weeks ago. I just took a piece of twine the right length and tied a knot at each end and used Fabri-Tac to adhere it. And then over the top, I glued little scraps of faux leather, but obviously you can use cardstock or even a piece of popsicle stick. But that gives it added security and the knots prevent it from sliding through. I absolutely love this. And it's the perfect size to either sit on a shelf or hang on a wall or a door. There are just so many possibilities. Thank you all for stopping by today and I hope you enjoyed this paint stick project. And I know you probably have tons of ideas of your own for decorating it and how you would use it. So I hope you stop by Crafters Castle on Facebook and share your creation with me. Happy crafting everyone. Bye bye. If you like this video, I hope you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, I hope you consider that too. And if you do, be sure to click the little bell next to the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos or giveaways. And I hope you stop by Crafters Castle on Facebook and also Crafters Castle Challenge Blog to enter your creations.